851, turn right, heading 180. 014, Papa, turn right 245, report localizer established 27. Hey all, welcome back to DJ's Aviation. I do hope you all are doing well. 2019 has started off brilliantly for both Airbus and Boeing, with multiple new orders coming in, and especially as the month of February closed. In addition, we've sadly seen a Boeing 767F crash killing all on board, news in regards to Etihad Airways, Jet Airways, and so much more. As I've been away from video making equipment for some time now, I thought I'd compile some of the content into one video for you all. So welcome back to another episode of the very popular aviation news series. We begin with Bamboo Airways, who confirmed an order with Boeing for 10 7879 Dreamliners. The airline, which was expected to start operations in Q4 of last year, has only just recently gotten properly underway due Due to delays getting its certification. The chairman of the FLC group and owner of Bamboo Airways commented on the order, which was previously listed as unidentified, and said, We are excited to be adding the new 787 Dreamliner to our growing fleet, adding our long-term vision is to connect Vietnam with key markets in Asia, Europe and North America, and the Dreamliner will enable us to launch these long-haul operations. The 787 superior operating economics and efficiency, as well as the passenger-pleasing interior of the Dreamliner, will allow us to successfully grow our business while enabling us to better serve our customers. While Kevin McAllister, the president and CEO of Boeing, said the 787 Dreamliner's unmatched efficiency, range and flexibility make it the perfect airplane for Bamboo Airways to achieve its long-range ambitions. We are excited to advance the partnership between Boeing and Bamboo Airways and we look forward to helping them connect Asia with Europe, North America and beyond. Bamboo Airways is a startup which was founded in 2017. They plan during this year alone to offer up to 40 domestic services from Vietnam. However, with these 787s and other future aircraft, they plan on expanding in Asia and the Oceania region, with countries like Australia, Japan, Singapore and more all on their radar. Countries within Europe have also been listed as potential future destinations into the 2020s. This video is sponsored by Audible. As an aviation enthusiast, we're always keen to learn more about the industry. Whether your interests also lie elsewhere, Audible is the best place to learn more about the industry on the go. By joining Audible, you get access to a unbeatable and frankly excellent selection of audiobooks. While aviation is present, bestsellers, thrillers and mysteries can also be found on the platform. Audible, in fact, has the largest selection of audiobooks currently on the planet and has its own originals. With such a large database, it has seen many find their perfect book to listen to. As a member, you can get three titles a month and get access to exclusive fitness programs too. While being able to listen on any device as mentioned, it is perfect to throw on before a video or after a video of mine, maybe while you're editing some aviation pictures or even sleeping. Today, I'm offering you a 30-day trial when you head over to my custom link, www.audible.com forward slash DJ. That's www.audible.com forward slash DJ. Or you can text DJ to 500 500. That's DJ to 500 500. Staying in Vietnam, Boeing won over a huge order for their 737 MAX. Vietjet announced they had ordered 100 additional 737 MAXs, which now takes their MAX total order tally to 200 jets. The deal is worth US $12.7 billion at list prices. The signing was witnessed by US President Donald Trump and includes 20 MAX 8s and a whopping 80 MAX 10s, giving a boost to the largest variant in the series. The president and CEO of Vietjet said, the deal for 200 Boeing 737 MAX airplanes today is an important move for us to keep up with our international flight network expansion plan with a higher capacity, thus offering our passengers with more exciting experiences when being able to fly to more new international destinations. While Kevin McAllister said, we are pleased to expand our partnership with Vietjet and to support their impressive growth with new advanced airplanes such as the 737 MAX. We are confident the MAX will help Vietjet grow more efficiently and provide great travel experiences for their passengers, adding the economic expansion in Hanoi and across Vietnam is impressive. Vietjet and the country's aviation sector are clearly enablers, helping to stimulate travel within Vietnam and connecting Vietnam with the rest of Asia. We are proud to support this economic development. 
which in turn supports engineering and manufacturing jobs in the United States. Staying with Boeing, Com Air Limited welcome their first 737 MAX 8. The airline becomes the first sub-Sahara airline in Africa to operate the MAX aircraft, and it does wear the British Airways livery. The executive director of Comair's airline division said the arrival of the MAX 8 aircraft is a continuation of our fleet renewal program and builds on one of the most modern and efficient fleet in South Africa, adding, it is the first of these aircraft to operate in Southern Africa. These newer aircraft, which showcase state-of-the-art technology, will improve our customer experience, enable us to hedge against fuel price vitality and enhance our operating efficiency. Moving across to Airbus, they also welcomed in a major yet also small order from Air Vanuatu, an airline which currently only operates small regional aircraft. The airline, which is now planning a complete fleet overhaul, selected the A220 for fleet expansion in an order which yet again highlights the demand for the A220 series. The airline signed a firm order for four Airbus A220s. This includes two of the Dash 100s and another two of the Dash 300s. These are the only two current variants of the series, which was previously known as the C-Series before Airbus took a majority stake, which was put into effect in the middle of last year. This order, though, means that Air Vanuatu will be the launch customer of the A220 in the Pacific region. The airline announced that the A220 would be deployed on services to the South Pacific, but more specifically, Melbourne. The Airbus chief commercial officer said, By ordering the A220, Air Vanuatu is making a significant investment in advanced technology and superior passenger comfort, while demonstrating its respect for fuel efficiency and the environment. Air Vanuatu's decision to place the Airbus A220 at the centre of its expansion plans will surely keep it one step ahead of the competition. Late February also saw rumours emerge of Etihad Airways joining the Star Alliance. This came only after Etihad's booking with one world member American Airlines and their AA Advantage miles were apparently suspended. Multiple sources made the claims and said it had a lot to do with Etihad eyeing joining, of course, the Star Alliance. This comes after in 2018, Etihad officials noting that they would be opening to join the alliance. Following the Atlas Air 767 cargo crash, which crashed into Trinity Bay near Texas, Boeing released an official statement. If you're interested in purely hearing about the crash though, please feel free to view my recent video on the unfortunate circumstances as I'm just going to cover the statement in this particular section of Aviation News Weekly. Boeing, in their statement published on the 23rd of February, said Boeing is deeply saddened to learn of the accident involving an Atlas Air 767 cargo airplane that crashed into Trinity Bay near, near Texas shortly before 12.45pm local time Saturday. We are concerned about the safety of the three people reported to be on board the airplane. We are prepared to provide technical assistance to the National Transport Safety Board as it does investigate the accident. Moving on now though. Following China Southern leaving the Sky Team Alliance, many believe that they would be joining the One World Alliance after recent code share agreements and more with American Airlines came to light. Now One World has very openly said that they are not in discussion at this point in time with China Southern about them joining their alliance. They added that there is no pressure to get the former Sky Team airline to join them. This is despite the recent code share agreements with One World members that I just mentioned. That concludes another episode of Aviation News Weekly. Thank you so much to Audible for sponsoring this video, and I do appreciate the response to you taking in these sponsors. At the end of the day, it allows me to do a lot of the things I do, like the up-and-coming Qantas 747 trip report, where I flew from Sydney to Avalon and back, and also things like going to London to witness the airside arrival of the BOAC, and then of course releasing a short film for you, which should be up in the coming days if it isn't out already. With that being said, thank you very much for watching, and I do very much look forward to you all joining me in the next one. The night. Race all of these broken dreams and flight. And we'll fly.